Hello guys. So in this video, we will learn how decision tree works with regression problems. Okay. So in this case, I have considered a simple data set wherein we'll have only two columns. One is GRA score and the second column is chance of admission. Okay. So this particular column here, chance of admission is our target variable. Okay. So treat this as Y and GRE score is a column which will be our feature. Okay. So you can call it as independent feature or X. Okay. So this is the data set. We have five records in this. So our task here is to predict these values. The chance of admit ranges from 0 to 1. Okay. So 1 being highest chance, 0 being no chance of getting the admission. Okay. So this is what we have to train a decision tree to fit to this particular regression data. So how this works? So there are several steps which I will be going through in detail. So please listen to it carefully because the same concept can be applied to multiple features as well. So in this case, I have considered only one independent feature, right? And we have one target variable. So <clears throat> the similar, the same concept can be extended when we have multiple independent features and one target variable. Okay. So please listen to this video carefully and watch it till the end to have a better understanding. Okay. So let's get started. So what are the steps and how this works? So the first step is we have to sort the data based on independent feature. Okay. In ascending order. So I have written the same data in sorted order. Okay. So here it is. 314, 316, 322, 324, 337. These are all our GRE scores and respective chance of getting admission. These are the values. Okay. So now what is the next step? Once we have sorted the data in ascending order of the feature, the next step is to consider first two records. Okay. So consider these two records. Calculate the mean of the features. Calculate the mean of this. So what's the mean of this? 314 plus 316 by 2. So this will be I think 630 by 2. Right. So this will be 315. So GRE score mean for the first two records is 315. Okay. And let's call this as mean 1. Fine. Then what we will do? We will split this particular data. So this is how it looks visually when we plot on two dimensional graphs. Okay. So what we do next step, we will split this data along x axis at 315, which is our mean of the GRE scores for the first two records. Okay. So where is 315? It is here. So what we will do, we will split this particular data set at this particular mean. So this is how the data looks like after splitting it. So this particular line, the split line actually divides the entire data set into two groups, right? One where the GRE score is less than 315 and the other group where the GRE score is greater than 315. Okay. Next, what is the next step? What we have to do here is we have to understand whether this particular split here is a good split or not. So we need to have a measure, right? in order to say whether this is a good good split or not right so how do we do that so the next step is that is the step 3 is we will compute the ssis when i say ssis it is nothing but sum of squared errors okay so what is the sum of squared errors and how do we do that for each of the data group here so we will get two data groups right after splitting at that particular mean so what we do we will compute the mean for each of the group okay so, what does that mean? We have to compute the mean of the target variable, which is chance of getting admission for each of these data groups. Okay. I hope you people are following me. Once we compute the mean, then we will be able to compute the sum of squared errors for each of the data groups. One before 315 and one greater than 315. Okay. Then, with respect to this data, how it works? So, for the data group, where the GRE score is less than 315, we have only one point here, right? So there is no need to compute the mean. That's the value. That's the mean only, right? So we will leave it as it is. Next, what we will do, we will come to this particular data group here. 
okay what we will do we will compute the mean for this particular data points so what are those so greater than 315 so we get four data points here right so 316 322 324 337 and their respective chances are 0 0.72 0 0.80 0 0.76 and 0 0.92 and we will divide it by four the number of elements to get our mean value so if i compute this mean here uh, give me a second let me quickly open the calculator <clears throat> so sorry guys so let me just move it to the other side okay so the values are 0 0.72 plus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.76 plus 0 0.92 and we will divide it by 4. We will get 0.8 as our mean. Hope the calculation is correct. Okay. So now what we will do? We will split this particular group at, we will not split, sorry, uh, my bad. So we will draw the mean line here at chance of admission is equal to 0.8. So this is our mean for this particular data points okay so once we have this we will be able to calculate the sum of the squared errors so what is sum of the squared errors we will calculate the distance between the actual value and the mean value right so for this it is this this particular value for this it's exactly at 8 so there is no difference and for this particular point it's this particular thing that's the difference here it's very small please bear with me and for this particular data point, this is the sum of squared errors. So these are also called as residuals. Okay, residuals. In machine learning literature, these are called as residuals or we can also treat them as errors. So what we do, we will square them and add them together to get our SSC for this particular group. Right, same way. So this is how we recorded SSC for two groups. Right, so the data points which have the GR score less than 315 and the data points which have the GR score greater than 315. So we have computed SSC, SSC value for each of those groups. In order to get one single SSC for this particular split here, where we have split the given data points at GR score equal to 315, we need to have one SSC. So what do we do? We will add the SSC for both of these groups. Okay. And then we will call that SSC as SSC at mean 1. And here mean 1 is 315. You have to remember this guys. You have to, in order to understand the next step, you have to remember this. Okay. Now, now we have dealt with the first two records. Okay. Next, next is, what is the next step? We will have to consider these two records. Okay. So that's why it is important to sort the data in ascending order first. Okay. Now what we will do? We will repeat the same steps. So we will consider 316, 322. So we will compute the mean 316 plus 322 divided by 2. So this will be 638 by 2 and it will be 319. So now the split line will be at 319. Okay. So this is our first split. Next, our split will be at 319. So, it will be somewhere here. So, this is our line which splits the data set into two parts. Okay. So, now at this particular split line, we have two data points which have GRE score less than 320, 319 because that is our mean 319 and there are three data points which have GRE score greater than 319. Right. So, next what is the step? We, we will compute the mean of the chance of admission for each of these groups and then compute the sum of squared errors for each of that group. Once we have the sum of squared errors, we will add sum of squared errors for each of those groups to get one sum of squared error and we will call that as sum of squared error at mean 2 and this mean 2 is 319. Okay. So, like this, at the next step, we will consider these two these two records 322.80 0 
and 324.76. So we will repeat the same steps for m minus 1 iterations. What is m minus 1 iterations? So let's say we are denoting the total number of training example with the letter m. So if we take two two records at every instance, we will totally have sum of squared errors m minus 1 instances, right? So we will have m minus 1 sum of squared errors with us. Then once we have computed all the sum of squared errors for all the data points considering in this way, what we will do? We will select that sum of squared error which has the least value. So geometrically if you want to understand it, so if I just plot that, so let me just say GRE mean on x axis okay, and we will have the SSC on y axis. So let's say we are plotting it at every iteration. Okay. So let's say for the first data point, first two data points, these two data points, we get some some squared errors. Okay. So let's say it is somewhere here. Okay. And this mean is 300 and sorry, what was it? 315, right? So we will record it. 315. For 315 GRE mean score, we will get some of squared errors somewhere here. So similarly for 319 mean score which is our second iteration, second iteration mean of GRE scores, we will plot the SSE in the same way. So let's say we got SSE, sorry it should be coinciding here. So let's say we got it somewhere here. So similarly for all the data points we will compute the sum of square errors. So it may look like this. Okay. So now which one we will be taking? This data point is having the least some square errors, right? So we will pick this particular mean. Okay, what is this? This is the GRE score mean value. Okay, so let's say uh, after all these iterations, we got this GRE score mean as 320. Okay, so how the decision tree will be splitting as the first root node? It will be GRE score, sorry for that, GRE score less than 320. So this will be our first decision node. So this is our root node. Okay. So we have arrived at our root node for constructing a decision tree to solve the regression problem. So this will have two branches here. So one is GRE score less than 320, yes. And the second is GRE score less than 320, no. So this, this side we will have all the data points where GRE score is greater than or equal to 320. At this particular sub branch we will have all the data points where GRE score is less than 320. Okay. So what next? So once we have this, what is next? So if we go on doing the same way, so let's say we have some two data points here, okay? Two data points here, and we'll have three data points here. Okay, so what's the next step? So we have to again carry out the same steps here. Okay, so with respect to these two data points, we have to compute SSEs in the same way we computed here. Okay, there is no change. So, but for the reference, we will have only two data points. So, there will be only two data points where we will be computing the mean of the GRE score. We will be splitting at that point. Okay, so we will have one data point below that mean and one data point above that mean. And with respect to this subtree, we will have a split wherein we can have one data point here and two data points here, or two data points here and one data point here before and after the means. Right. So, whatever we do, we do with respect to the data points that we have at each subtree and we will continue doing it. So, till how long we will continue doing it? There has to be some stopping criteria, right? criteria, right? So, if we just continue doing this, what this algorithm will do? It will just memorize, it will just by heart entire training data and it will just memorize, okay, for this GRE score, this is the chance, this GRE score, this is the chance. So, this will result in overfitting the training data. So, in order to avoid this, what we will do? We will have some stopping criteria. 
there there can be many more than one stopping criteria but for this particular video sake let me take the stopping criteria as stopping criteria so what it would be so minimum number of samples at the node to split okay so what this does we can set it to two let's say we'll set it to two now so what happens now we have two data points at this particular step right so if we split this further it will result in one data point it will result in less than two data points at each of these sub branches right so what we will do we will stop it here so this particular sub tree we will not branch it out again we will not do that now we will concentrate everything at this particular data points where the gri score is greater than or equal to 320 here again what we will do we will split it one two okay so again this will be one here so it is not matching our criteria we will stop at this particular point and we will say our construction of decision tree is complete so why we are having the stopping criteria just to avoid overfitting so there are many stopping criteria so those are all called as hyper parameters okay so do not worry about this thing this is just an example okay to understand why we need to stop the construction of decision tree at the, at any particular level in order to just avoid overfitting okay and there are many stopping criteria like this and those are all called as hyper parameters i will cover each of those parameters in my another video and understand each one of them in detail okay so this is how we construct a decision tree so what happens after training so this is called the training phase okay so all the steps that we have seen till now is called as training phase so how do we predict on the test data or unseen data right so let's say uh, let me quickly construct a tree again so initially gre score less than 320 so this is our root node yes no so let's say we have two data points here and at this sub branch we will have three data points okay so for an example let's take uh for instance we get a data point where the gre score is 330 okay so let's consider for testing purpose or in order to understand the unseen data prediction let's say we got a data point where our gre score is 330 and our task here is to predict the chance of getting admission okay so how do we do that so we will go to this particular tree so test data gre score is 330 so what it will do it will go to this particular root node it will check for this condition gre score less than 320 it is not less than 320 it is greater than 320 so it will come at this particular sub branch now it will see is there any further split here so there is no further split here so we have three data points we have to predict at this particular point itself so what will be the value for this chance target variable what will be the predicted value so it will be the average value of these three points okay average value of these three points okay so for example if we get another test data where gre score is 308 so what we will do so we will again check at this particular condition gre score is less than 320 yes so it will come at this particular branch now and then there are no further splits here so what we will do we will predict the chance for this particular gre score chance of getting admission as mean value of these two data points mean or average average value of these two data points okay so this is how a decision tree works when we have one feature or one independent variable and one target variable okay so how about the data set where we have multiple features and one target variable 
So now I am talking about the case where we have feature x1, x2, x3, so on and so forth up to xn and then we have a target variable y. So how the decision tree works in this case? So this is the last point in this video. So please bear with me. Okay. I know this is uh, getting a bit complex here, but once you understand the gist of it, it's very easy to explain it and to work it out. Okay. So just bear with me for one or two more minutes. Right. So now we will see how decision tree works with multivariate data set. So we call any data set as multivariate if we have more than one feature in it. Okay. So in this case, we have n features. 1, 2, 3 up to n features and one target variable that is our y. Okay. So this y is dependent on all these n features. So how decision tree works. So if you have understood this particular setup here, how this works with one variable. So it's the same thing. We do the same comparison x1 with y. Okay. We will calculate the mean of x1. We will compute the SSEs at each mean. We will record it. And similarly, at the next step, we will do the comparison between x2 and y. We will compute the SSEs, record them for each data points, for each two data points consecutively, right? And then record their SSEs. Similarly, we do for all the n features, okay? Then what we will do? We will select the feature which gives us the minimum SSE. So select the feature. So sorry. Let me write it in a neat way. So, what we will do? Select the feature which gives minimum SSE. Okay. So, this should be the lowest value. Select that particular feature to initially split the data into two parts. Okay. Then what? So let's say we have split this particular data set at some condition x2 less than some value. Okay. So remaining features are x1, x3 up to xn. Here also we will have x1, x3 up to xn. Right. So we will have certain data points at this sub branch and we will have certain data points at this particular sub branch. <coughs> Correct. Then again we will repeat the same thing. We will do the comparative analysis with each feature x1 and target variable y, x3 target variable y, xn target variable y at the both sub branches and select the feature which gives us least sum squared errors. Right? Then we go on splitting it further. And we can have more than one stopping criteria specified in order to stop the building of decision tree. Okay. So that's it about decision tree regression. When we are dealing with continuous values, we call it as regression, right? So, when do we need to use decision tree regression? So, let's say this is a uh, this is just a sample data, right? So, the data by itself actually looks linear. So, we could have set the linear regression algorithm perfectly to this particular data points, right? Without any much effort. So, in what cases we may need to use decision tree regression? So, when the relationship between the target and the independent feature are not linear. So, what do I mean by that? So, let me just quickly give you the overview of that. So, let's say we have a feature x and target variable y. And if our data looks like this. Okay, so this is not a linear relationship, right? Not a linear relationship. So, if we try to fit linear regression, we will fail very badly. Linear regression would fail on these type of data sets where the relationship between the target and independent features are not linear. So, in these cases, we can go with decision trees okay so that's it about the decision tree guys so it has some of its own pros and cons we will deal with that in 
another video where I discuss about issues with decision tree and how we can overcome it. So there is an improvement over decision tree called as random forest. So I will talk about that in my next upcoming videos. Okay. So stay tuned for more videos from my side. If you are liking the content, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Okay. So thanks for and all. Happy learning. Bye bye.